Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we're gonna to be building a custom exhaust for my 335i wagon by combining the 325 stock exhaust system with the 335 front section. We're also gonna be changing out the wheels on the wagon and doing a makeshift alignment just to get the car driving straight and then hopefully be able to take this thing for a test drive and hear how the new sleeper exhaust system sounds. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into today's video. So my plan is to use the 335 front section which bolts up to the downpipe and goes all the way to the secondary catalytic converters. And then we have this section right here that I marked off and that's where one of the trans braces goes for the transmission tunnel. And same thing on the 325 exhaust as well. They both have one in the same spot as the chassis. And so I thought that would be a really cool point to cut them both and kind of make this combined exhaust system. So from the 335, we're gonna go to the 325 system, gonna use the factory resonator and the factory rear muffler factory tips so it's going to be really really quiet hopefully and look like the factory exhaust system but it's going to give us that sleeper aspect to this build so what i think we're going to do is start cutting off the two exhaust systems and then we'll go into the garage and start test fitting our system and then we'll start tacking it up and get into the welding This pipe cutter usually does me a good job for OEM exhaust systems. It's just not getting through the factory 335 pipe right up here. So I used it to make some cut marks and then we're gonna grab the Sawzall right now and just finish off these cuts and get all the way through them so that we can continue with making the exhaust. So that was a piece of work between the exhaust cutter, the Sawzall, which I ran out of blades, and then finally the angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. But the angle grinder made it look kind of easy. You just can't really get into some of the corners there. But anyways, let's go ahead and rearrange the pieces here and mock up the exhaust that I have in my mind. Well, it actually just kind of went together like Legos there. Although I'm assuming once we bolt up to the downpipe, it's gonna be a little bit different fitting. But you can see here how I cut it. The smaller 325 exhaust actually fits inside perfectly the 335 pipes. So that's gonna make a really nice surface for us to weld to. And then the back section is that 325 I was talking about. So all we have to do now is go ahead and mock up the front pipes and then the rear exhaust system. And then once it's all in the right place, we'll put a couple of tack welds to hold it like this, take it out of the car, and then weld the whole thing all around. So we've got the entire exhaust mocked up right now. You can see full ground clearance, just like the OEM system. And from the front here, I don't have any gaskets installed, but I do have some new hardware holding the secondary pipes to the down pipes. And then right here, we do have the factory bracket that goes to the transmission installed. So it's holding those pipes up and parallel. And then back here, you've got the secondary cats. And then this is our joint where we've got the 325 exhaust that's gonna match up to the 335. It's really, really close. I did cut extra off of both ends 
um, but I should have cut off a little bit more because you can see if it it's in, but we're gonna be bridging a little bit of a gap there. Um, whenever, I, whenever I do kind of push this exhaust up, it does slide back. So I'll probably hold it in place, do a couple tack welds, and then we'll do a nice bead around the bottom of both of these something that's gonna be strong enough to keep it straight and in position while we remove the exhaust and then re-weld the rest of it. And uh, right here, you can see the four bolt holes for that bracket. So this weld is actually gonna poke out from that bracket. It's not gonna be 100% hidden like I was hoping. But at least we are achieving what I had in mind. And uh, it looks like we don't have to use any additional hardware or metal to get these two pieces of exhaust welded together. So there you have it. Not the prettiest weld in the world, but I think that we've got a 100% seal around the entire length of the exhaust. So again, front section 335, rear section 325, my crappy welds in the middle. And now all we have to do is test fit it again. Hopefully everything lines up again. There is a little bit of a smaller gap here than I was hoping for, but we do have some flex in there to get them you know, attached to the downpipes. So yeah, let's go ahead, install the exhaust, and then we'll move on to swapping the wheels out. the second shot well you know what i popped the wheel off here and i didn't seem to notice that same kind of tire unevenness that it had before and one of my neighbors had mentioned yesterday when i was driving the car that the car had flat tires so i did pump up the tires maybe a couple hours ago before we started the video and now we don't see them deform so i'm wondering if maybe they're good maybe it was just because they were all low on pressure that we had that weird ride and the weird shape so i'm just gonna go ahead and torque these back down and then we'll put the car on the ground and then get an alignment measurement with our toe plates One thing's for sure, it definitely looks better with these wheels. So if you haven't used toe plates before, these things go on the wheel, obviously, and smack dab on the face of it with two measuring tapes on either side. And what you're doing is you're measuring the distance between the front of the wheel and the back of the wheel on each side. And you're looking for the same distance, which means that both wheels are pointed exactly straight when the steering wheel is straight. Now, in this case, the rear measurement looks like a little bit more than, what is it? A little bit more than 69 inches. And the front one here looks like a lot less. 
less, like about 68 and a half inches. So that means that we currently have a tote in scenario and that's why the car is pulling really hard to one side. So what we need to do is determine which wheel is pointed in and it's possible that both of them are evenly pointed in. So we'll have to kind of play with the alignment settings in order to get the wheel to point straight and the wheels to point straight. And once we do that, we should have a perfectly aligned car. Well, as far as tow goes, because this doesn't align caster or camber adjustments. So the toe is gonna to be adjusted by the steering tie rod, this black thing that you can see with the boot that goes to the steering rack. And this particular OEM one, it has a little locking bolt right here and we need to loosen that locking bolt. And then from the inner tie rod, we're gonna go ahead and spin it counterclockwise, lefty loosey, and that is going to push the wheel from the front outwards and that is gonna correct our toe problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then we'll make another measurement and see if we need to make another adjustment. And remember, whatever adjustment you make here, you need to make it evenly on the other side, unless you know that one wheel is particularly out of tow. So we made our adjustment. Now I'm gonna come back in and tighten up this locking bolt. That's gonna make sure that the alignment doesn't change while we're driving it. So right there, you can see that line just right where the six is about to come out. And right here, maybe a little bit less, you can kind of see the six actually. So I'd say we're almost at zero toe, maybe a little bit of toe out. So the wheels pointing away from each other, but it's definitely a lot closer than it was before. So let's go ahead and wait for the light to come out and then take this car for a test drive. And that way we'll also be able to hear how this exhaust sounds, the sleeper looking exhaust system. And I'll tell you guys my thoughts on it. So it's a moment of truth now. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera so you guys can hear the first cold start with our new exhaust system. And you guys tell me what you think in the comments down below. Uh, well that's not good. It literally sounds like it's misfiring. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But let's go ahead and grab the scanner out. I did want to show you guys that the exhaust, it's a little bit leaning to the right side. That's my only complaint with this system, uh, but obviously that's my fault. So let's go ahead, let's turn the engine off and let's give it a fault read. All right, so full fault readout, got a lot of codes, I'm sure, but we're just going to be interested in seeing what the DME has to say. It looks like cylinders one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> Every cylinder except for six. And then fuel pump code, oxygen. Oh, we got more than that. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and delete the fault memory. And I mean, cylinders one, two, three, four, and five. I mean, that's a lot of cylinders to misfire on. So um, yeah, we'll delete the fault codes and then start the car up and see how many cylinders it runs on. So we're gonna check those faults again because it was clearly misfiring still. And it looks like cylinder one misfire. And that kind of makes sense because the last time it read cylinder one misfire twice. So let's go ahead and check out cylinder one, see what the issue is. Now to recap, here in the engine, we have recently replaced all the spark plugs as well as all the ignition coils. All those have been changed. Now we did have misfires caused by the DME, but we've upgraded to the MSD81. And since then, we did have two injectors that were bad. I believe they were cylinders two and three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think it was bank one that was completely dead on the DME. So I'm wondering if it's possible that we have a bad injector, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
start by swapping out the coils from one to let's say number four, get it far away from the bank and the original cylinder that it was on. And that way, if it falls and goes to number four, we know it's a coil issue, but if it doesn't, we probably know that it's an injector issue. And I do have some extra injectors so we can try and mess with those, get one installed and hopefully have this thing running real good because I do want to see what it's like going into boost with this super sleeper exhaust system. Oily. Not oily. Well, cylinder four had an oily spark plug. So we have some oil leak going on back there, although it could just be residual from when it was leaking before. I think when the gasket was bad. Yeah, we got those changed. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. And now we can go back inside the car and clear the codes. And I'm gonna do that with my Foxwell scanner just because it's a little bit faster for doing things one module at a time, like doing you know engine code scanning and stuff like that. So we can much more easily just clear the codes, read them, check which cylinder it is, and just do these things back to back. So we'll clear the codes, all clear, read them, should be nothing. And now we can go ahead and start the car back up. Still misfiring. Oh my gosh, one and four. What the heck? What do you mean one and four? Let's turn the car off. I think cylinder one came back first and then cylinder four. Just make sure cylinder four is fully seated. Good to go. Injector is good. All the grounds are tight for the injectors. All right, so we clear the codes again. And let's try to read the codes even faster this time. Misfire cylinder one. All right, well, I am confident to say that this car has got a bad injector. This car is probably gonna throw all of the weird problems at me, but luckily I have extras. So let me go ahead and grab one. We'll throw it inside the car and get it coated. <laughs> this is why you always keep spares. Now ISTA has a really great program for programming the injectors and coding those uh, compensation numbers. So we'll go ahead and use this and they kind of break it down easy, put the numbers in and then we'll be good to go. There you go, new numbers in, click continue and then click no since we don't have any other cylinders that we wanna program and we're gonna click save the adjustment value. So just like that, we're all good to go. Take the key out, continue, and it has got them saved. So we should be able to go ahead and finish out of this function here. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the key in. Oh. Well, you can hear the turbos, but it's still not running on all six. Moments later. All right, I cleared the codes out, started the car, and now it's not running without a check engine light. Or sorry, it is running without a check engine light. No misfire. So, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what to think. Let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> let's take it for a drive while it's running good, I guess. <laughs> and you guys can hear it as well. Well, I gotta say, I asked for something quiet and something quiet I have made. Still pulls a little bit to the left, I think. Alignment isn't 
But you know what I'm also thinking, guys, is we might have old gas in this car. And so I'm wondering if maybe we should grab some sea foam or some fresh gas to kind of just clear out the system. We are road legal now, so we can take this thing as far as we want. Listen to that spool coming. Oh boy. Oh boy, this car is gonna be hard to let go. Oh, so I added tire pressure to all the tires. So I added air, sorry, I added air pressure to all the tires. So now we should see if the tires are either badly balanced or, or what the deal is, if the tires are bad or not. All right, you know what, the, the alignment is, is pretty, you know, alignment's better than it was before, I'll say that. We just need to throw it on the tow plates one more time. That's kind of the inconvenient part with tow plates is that you gotta go up, down, up, down, you know, get it on the lift. But I think that for just one quick adjustment, we did a good job. At least the wheel still point, points straight and the car, well, it kind of goes straight, kind of goes to the left, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Tires, man, they still feel a little bouncy. I'm, Wondering if we take off those 550 rims, we'll, we'll probably put the 325 wheels on. And I think those will probably ride a lot better because I think those are balanced. Whoa. Oh boy. So we got a lot of wheel shake going on here, especially between gears, I think, you know, when we're putting, yeah, when we put, when we put the brakes down to this wheel shakes. So that tells us that the bushings, I, I believe are bad. Also the alignment being bad could cause this, kind of exaggerate it. Let's go ahead and uh, grab some gas really quick and uh, kind of do our first gas trip in this car. Well, she pulls good, that's for sure, guys. And we got a little bit more gas now, so from about a quarter tank to a little bit over a half tank. So hopefully that mixes with the old gas and makes a good little concoction in the fuel tank and uh, we'll have no misfires, fingers crossed. Do a little pull with the, uh, the windows up. <laughs> oh man. You definitely hear a lot of noise um, coming through, but the cabin filter is not installed right now, so it's gonna be pretty noisy. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get the car back to the shop and see if we can get the alignment a little bit better. I just realized now that the factory 325 wheels, being that I think they're 16s, yep, yeah, 16s, they're not gonna fit over the factory 335i brakes because they're too big. So I think we've run into a problem here because these tires, the 550 rims, they have bad tires. These ones, too small. And then the other 335 wheels that came on that car right there, those ones are not my taste, honestly. I'd rather go with some OEM wheels. So I guess we'll put the 550i rim back on, get this car aligned a little bit better in the front, and then take it for one final drive. Well, you know what, the car's still pulling a little bit to the left, but 
I should probably mention that in an upcoming episode, we will be doing new control arm bushings in the front, courtesy of PowerFlex. And so when we do those, we'll probably do another alignment and uh, check over everything, make sure everything's tight, you know, because it just doesn't feel 100%. I, I guess some of the suspension components had been replaced, but it looks like one of the tie rods at least is broken aftermarket and we're gonna have to replace it again. So more work to do, but for now, I'm just happy to be going into boost. The car is nice and quiet, so I don't feel bad driving it. And uh, yeah, having a blast so far. Lots of boost noises. We love it, we love it. So that's gonna conclude our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching us dial in some little things on the 335. Obviously, super excited, super excited to have this build going along and more mods to be coming, a little bit more service. Uh, I'm gonna have to buy some more parts, it looks like, but uh, I'm just enjoying driving this car so much now that it's quieter and uh, we can you know, get into boost and all that. And so far, so good, seems to be reliable, so I can't complain at all. But if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. And as always, I hope everyone has an amazing day. We'll see you next time. Thank you.